a clever bit of design of the Odyssey, where they've really given it some thought, is that not only have you got the sample and hold output control voltage that you can apply to things, but you can also feed the output of the sample and hold mixer somewhere else on the synth before it goes into the sample and hold. And this is a subtle distinction. And this is cool because the audio output of the sample and hold mixer is sent to a couple of destinations as a modulation source. So that means that you can modulate a couple of things at audio rate, at audio frequencies. And the two things that you can modulate in this way are the filter cutoff. So you've got audio rate filter modulation. And the other destination, if you remember, was VCO2. So you can modulate the frequency of VCO2 at audio rates. That is the definition of FM. That's what a DX7 does. Now it's not as good on this because it isn't digitally controlled, it isn't precise, it's analog. But still, you've got audio rate frequency modulation, which is cool. Let me demonstrate. So we'll get rid of the modulation of VCO1, pull down that very stiff slider in the sample and hold mixer. And what we need to be listening to is VCO2, not VCO1. Get rid of VCO1. So, if we bring up this slider, LFO control because the switch is in the upper position, move it to sample and hold mixer. That's without. some lovely FM sounds. And so everything that I said about mixing together audio sources in the sample and hold mixer to change the character of the sample and hold control voltage also applies when you're sending the output of the mixer as a an audio rate modulation. So that's with VCO1's saw wave. We can have VCO1 square wave which changes the pitch and this is where the analog nature gets a bit in the way that that is sounding really quite nasty um, because it needs retuning Play two notes at once and it sounds even more nasty. And of course I'm not changing anything about VCO2, so I mean you can... It's currently on square wave, you could have it on sawtooth, you could have pulse width modulation on square wave. Everything that we've discussed so far you can do with VCO1. But you've also got all the control in the sample and hold mixer whilst you're doing that as well. As I say, we're currently just modulating VCO2 with 
VCO1. Um, we could modulate it with a noise generator, which is not going to sound nice. but could have uses for special effects. And that is with the slider at maximum. You turn it down a bit. And you get a bit more sort of tonal character to it. But yeah, that can give you sort of quite gritty sounds that could find uses in, I don't know, whatever you want. And of course we can switch that from noise generator to VCO2 square wave. So you've basically got VCO2 modulating itself. which doesn't really seem to do as much to the um, timbre. It's not as timbrely interesting. But of course, we've just used one input to the sample and hold mixer or the other. You can mix both to get even more complex audio rate modulation of VCO2. And of course, I've not touched the frequency VCO1. You can play with that as well. So you've got a lot of scope there. And then you could do interesting stuff like um, modulate the frequency of VCO2. modulate the pitch of VCO1 with, say, the envelope. so cool. Um, you can also use the sample and hold. And all this time I've only had the level of VCO2 up in the audio mixer so we're not hearing VCO1, we're hearing the effect of it modulating VCO2, but we're not hearing the oscillator itself. We could do that. Let's get rid of the sample and hold. So you can bring that into the mix. So you've got VCO2 modulated by VCO1 playing alongside the sound of VCO1. So you can get more complex sounds. Adjusting the pulse width is obviously going to have a timbral effect on the FM of VCO2. So uh, retune. Ooh, that's 
not nice. <laughs> So you've got plenty of scope there for creating lots of weird and wonderful and gnarly sounds. And this is before we get on to envelope control, filter and all that. 